Much advertised, much talked about. Bruno is out this week. Mark. Okay, so the latest from Sasha Baron Cohen, who of course is the guy behind Ali G, behind uh, Borat, and now Bruno. And one imagines that to some extent this particular wellspring will pretty much have run dry because of how famous Sasha Baron Cohen has become. You remember when Ali G started out, the gig, the, the the gag was nobody knew who Sasha Baron Cohen was, so it was possible for him to dress up as this guy who was white but pretended to be black, and then go and interview politicians like Tony Blair, who didn't do, didn't see him coming. When he did Borat, he adopted the character of Borat, this Kazakhstani character, who, again, people didn't quite recognise because he did look very, very dissimilar. So a number of people were involved in Borat, the movie, who didn't know they were being involved in a spoof. Notably, there's that scene in which uh, he goes to a New York dinner party and speaks to some feminists who he doesn't understand at all. He got very, very upset about the fact that he had he had uh, spoofed them. Now, Bruno, which I think is probably the last time that he can get away from it because I think it is now everyone kind of knows who Sasha Baron Cohen is. And already there is evidence in Bruno that they were struggling to find people who didn't understand the gag. So the Bruno character you may have seen before, and I'm sure you all know this because there have been buses going up and down the high street with it written all over and blah, 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 blah. But the story is, so he's a gay Austrian fashionista who uh, runs a TV show called uh, the Funky Sight with the Mit Bruno. And he's fired after going to a fashion show wearing a suit made entirely out of Velcro, which of course sticks to everything and causes furniture to fall over. And he knocks things off the catwalk and therefore is fired. And that's done in one of those sort of faux documentary fashions that sort of suggests that somehow Sasha Baron Cohen turned up, hijacked the event. You know, uh, just before Bruno opened, there was the famous stunt about him being lowered down at the MTV Awards onto a, a waiting Eminem, who then stormed out. But then it was said, actually, the whole thing was a setup. Yep. So there is, uh, there is all the way through Bruno, the, the question of how much is anybody in on the gag, okay? So anyway, so he's fired from the thing. He decides that uh, fashion is uh, hollow. He decides that he's going to go to Hollywood and become famous. And uh, in the manner of the Sasha, Bar Sasha Baron Cohen uh, comic uh, characters, the way in which he becomes famous is essentially to sort of puncture the rich and famous. So he thinks, oh, I know, I'll, I'll uh, adopt uh, an African baby. I will uh, find some cause that's going to make me famous. I will do all this sort of charity work that makes other people famous. And I will go to the Middle East, which he refers to as Middle Earth, to solve their problem. You see, they got a laugh out of you. I know, I was smiling. To, uh, to solve their problems, uh, unfortunately, he doesn't understand the difference between Hamas and Hummus. Here's a clip. Why are you so anti-Hamas? I mean, isn't pita bread the real enemy? If you're confusing Hamas with Hummus, I believe. Hummus you, has nothing to do with Do you think there is a relation between Hamas and Hummus? So was the founder of Hamas a chef? He had created the, the food and then got lots of followers. Hummus has nothing to do with Hamas. It's a food, okay? We eat it, they eat it. It's vegetarian, it's healthy, oh. it's beans. So, the first thing to say I is... you see, laughing. Yeah, exactly. And, and, That's and, funny, it's a good joke. No, there, it is a good joke. And there are certainly um, some good jokes in Bruno. There's a thing when he's trying to look for a, 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 a crisis to attach himself to, and he says, famously, everyone's quoted this, he says, we've had Darfur and I want to know where Dar 5 is. And yeah. so there are things in it that are, you know, solid comedy. Um, and uh, he, there are other, you know, bits in it which he, you know, he goes to a Hollywood, uh, he goes to a what do you call it, a medium to contact the spirit of Milli und Vanilli, and there's a scene which then plays out, which is, you know, rampagingly explicit, and you know, it is funny in as much as it's so embarrassing because you can't really believe somebody's actually doing this, uh, you know, in front of you on screen. And it's worth saying, incidentally, that the movie has an 18 certificate. You have to work quite hard to get an 18 certificate now, but the, B the BBFC have classified it 18 for strong sex and sex references and there is clearly a side to Sasha Baron Cohen which is very very um you know exhibitionist he's somebody who does like making a you bit... reckon no, no but <laughs> obviously but you know in a, in a in a in a sort of fairly kind of rampaging way and there are things about Bruno that are funny my issues with it are, are as follows firstly I have to say that the issues around the is it pro or anti-gay thing I think is a complete red herring I think that when um, people were saying, oh, well, he needs to come out and say that he's pro-gay rights or anti-gay rights, no, 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 the whole, you don't need to do that. You don't need to, we do not have to have the edges taken off things and everything made politically correct. I mean, it is fairly apparent if there is a thesis to the movie, what it is. Let the movie speak for itself. If you don't think the movie speaks for itself, fine. I spoke to somebody, I mean, a friend of mine saying, uh, you know, is it, what, what is that, what, is there a general feeling within the gay community? Are they pro it or anti it? You know, because you read one person says, and he says, well, general feeling is not 
none of us care. You know, we've seen it all before. Are we interested? And that is actually what he said was, if we have Graham Norton, why do we need Bruno? And there was a, kind of a point to that. The second thing is that... That once you take out the element of this being completely a joke sprung upon people that you don't that don't know they're being involved in it. On the one on one hand, it takes away a problem which I had with Borat because I think that there are soft targets that Sasha Baron Cohen goes for that I think don't really serve much point. And I think there is a certain smugness in some of what he does in his soft targets. So frankly. The more people are in on the joke, the more comfortable I feel about it. Although that one of the problems with Bruno is that it tries to suggest that it's all being done completely on the lamb. And I think there is a suggestion that some of the scenes that are looking like they're meant not to be set up do look too set up. And even if they aren't set up, the fact that they look set up is a problem. The other thing was I had the same experience that I had before with Borat of sitting in a room with people who were in gales of laughter about the, the more outre uh, humour. And none of that was as funny for me as it was for them. I think it is funnier than Borat. It's shorter than Borat. And I think that there are jokes in it that are superior to the jokes in Borat. I don't think that it's any form of comic masterpiece. And I think it is definitely the bottom of the well as far as doing this sort of thing again is concerned. Plus, there are some major problems that most notably the fact that in the wake of the death of Michael Jackson, they took out the uh, the Latoya Jackson scene because it was considered to be in bad taste. I mean, the BBFC report that the movie was submitted to them twice, most recently classified on the 17th of June and then reclassified on the 3rd of April after it was resubmitted with pr presumably that's when the uh, that's when that scene came out. And my feeling about it is this. It, I don't see why you can't have you know, equal opportunities offensiveness. I don't see why it's OK to offend some people but not OK, okay to offend Michael Jackson fans. I mean, that bothers me. As just a simple piece of comedy, did it make me laugh enough to say it's a decent comedy? Well, I laughed six times. That's, well, that's pretty good. So that's fine. So I laughed six times. So it did do what it says on the tin. And, and in Borat, I didn't laugh six times. It doesn't bother me uh, as, about the, the political issues because I think everybody's free to make up their own mind what the political issues are. You know, I don't actually think in the end that, in fact, it has a clear political agenda. I think an awful lot of it is throwing an awful lot of stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. I think he won't be able to do this again. And I still think that underlying it all is a degree of smugness that, that I'm not entirely comfortable with.